And I'd like to welcome all of you here for our 36th Beautification Commission Awards Ceremony. And we're glad to see all of you here on this nice day after yesterday. Our commission has eight members who are listed in your program. Uh, those, one is, I know one is homesick with the flu, so uh, those who are here, would you stand so you can be recognized? Commissioners. Thank you. Uh, Valerie Knoll, Councilperson Valerie Knoll is our uh, city council liaison. Uh, last April, the ninth Carol Posby Litter Walk was held to help promote litter control. 21 groups with 261 people participated from homeowners associations, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, and a church. It was held in conjunction with National Earth Day, which is, seems to be always on Octo um, October, April 22nd, Michigan Arbor Day in April, and the Keep Michigan Beautiful um, statewide cleanup programs. Uh, it was a Keep Michigan Beautiful award uh, winning project that we won here in Farmington Hills last year. Uh, we held the popular and successful May, spring, and September, fall plant swaps this year at Heritage Park. Also, the city for the 14th year was designated a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, the commission, uh, Farmington Hills Commission, is a member of the statewide organization of Keep Michigan Beautiful Incorporated. And as you may know, we are a charter member of its District 1 Beautification Council of Southeastern Michigan fondly known as BCSEM. We are always looking for new products and ideas uh, to adopt or carry out uh, for the beautification of our city. And we also welcome new members. Our meetings are held at City Hall on the third Tuesday of each month except December at 6 p.m. Uh, if you have any questions about our work or people on the commission, talk to them here tonight or come to a meeting. They are public meetings. Now I would like to introduce uh, our city manager, Gary Mechgen, for a few words. Adjust the mic a little bit here. Oh, thank you, Carol. Very much appreciate the introduction. Um, and I wanted to welcome everybody to uh, this year's annual beautification awards ceremony. You know, it's great to be gathered here tonight um, after the pandemic. Um, I think we have some special appreciation for being in an event in person, no masks. Some folks have masks, however you feel comfortable, and sharing this evening together. And it's great to see so many familiar faces and make some new friends this evening as well. Uh, I'd like to personally thank the members of the Beautification Commission for all the work they do to help maintain the high quality of life in our wonderful city. Uh, Farmington Hills is a place where we can be proud uh, to live and work, and that pride shows in the homes and the properties that are being honored tonight. I grew up here, for those of you who don't know that, many of you do, I'm a proud North Farmington graduate, um, and I still call this town my hometown. I'm proud to, do, proud, proud, to, proud to say that, and I'm very proud to be your city uh, manager. I want to thank you uh, for um, uh, being an important part of this community, and thank you for joining us tonight. 
And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our wonderful Mayor, Vicki Barnett. I'm so honored to be here tonight and to congratulate all of our beautification commissioners for the hard work that they do. I know my limits and I can kill plastic trees. <laughs> this is something that I've never been able, able to do. I can't grow a thing. Um, I was asked once um, why my day lilies, which are supposed to just be beautiful all summer long, um, look like they've been trampled on by a rodeo and it's because I don't know I, I don't know how to trim them I don't know how to water them I just my neighbor solved her problem by just planting plastic plants in her front yard <laughs> she did she really did um, so I can appreciate all the hard work that you do and all the hard work our honorees do in order to keep their property flourishing in beauty all year round and the hard work it takes to make sure that our city, I want to thank our staff that um, cleans the streets and makes sure that we have um, beautiful intersections and no mow areas where you can enjoy the wildflowers and all of the beautiful things that surround us in Farmington Hills. It's now my pleasure to first thank Catherine Massey for her dedication on this commission for a long time and for her gracious sharing of her husband, um, Ken Massey, who is going to be coming forward and, and giving you a viewpoint from somebody who's a lifelong resident of Farmington Hills. And Ken is not only a lifelong resident, but he served this community since 2003 with 12 years on city council. He was mayor pro tem in 2006, 10, and 15, and he was my predecessor as mayor from 15 to 2019. And while he was term limited as mayor for a brief period of time, um, he has run for re-election as a council member and has served us well. I also want to recognize my council members who are here. We have Michael Bridges, <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Mary Newland, <laughs> our soon to be sworn in next Mayor Pro Tem, Randy Bruce, Ken Massey, as I said, and Valerie Knoll, who is not here tonight, and neither is Jackie Bolwer. Um, both have other plans this evening, but hope that I share their uh, congratulations with all of you. Ken is vice president of both his Homeowners Association and a member of the Council of Homeowners Association. He is a member of the Michigan Municipal League, founding member and past chair of the Emergency Preparedness Committee. And I just want to say one thing about that, too, because that commission has won national awards at the National League of Cities and through the Michigan Municipal League. There is no other community that has such a vibrant emergency preparedness commission as we do here in Farmington Hills. And that was one of his great ideas, and he is still very active in that. He's also the co-founder of the Suicide Prevention Committee, Farmington Safe. He's on the board of CARES, which is our, um, our food bank and operates that and does many other community things through um, where the old St. Alexander Church was. And the director of that is Todd Lippa, who worked for us for many years. And, in, uh, and he's on the board of directors of, I don't know what it's called anymore, Botsford, Beaumont, <laughs> Corwell, Carewell? Corwell, Corwell, um, at all. You just know that if you need to go somewhere quick and you have an emergency, you just drive to Grand River and that's where it is no matter what it's called. It's a good hospital. Um, and he uh, continues to serve our council with many new ideas, his hard work and diligence, and I have to tell you that our council, if you watch council meetings a lot, I don't know if you do. We do for fun because that's what we do. Um, our council is one of the few city councils where everybody's viewpoint is respected and understood. And all of you who vote for your council members should know that the amount of time we put in 
and the energy that we share with each other and the new ideas that come up, we are a group of people with different points of view who always want to do the right thing and respect the needs and goals of our residents. So I'm very proud to be part of that kind of committee that serves its public. And without further ado, I will introduce my dear friend, Dr. Ken Massey. So good evening. Um, interestingly, I, I'm just going to give you a quick bit of history. And when I was asked to do this talk, I realized that normally the beautification award talks, you get folks here that are master gardeners, you have people that are landscapers, people that are involved in beautification and things like that. And so I am not one of those people. And this is going to be a slightly different perspective. And I was given a very broad, empty um, picture to build upon to come and talk to you tonight. And the idea, what makes Farmington Hills great? What makes it a great city? Every one of you probably has a different answer to that. And I, listening to the mayor's introduction there are a number of things that she mentioned that make us a great city. We're addressing needs of this community in a variety of ways. But my perspective tonight is just as somebody who is one, very involved in this community, and two, has been here for more years than I really want to admit. <clears throat> But I am a lifelong resident of the city of Farmington Hills, and one of the things that is important to me is that this community has allowed me to put down, and since we're talking beautification, roots. <laughs> you cannot grow a large, beautiful tree if it doesn't have the right root system. It's going to fall over. You can't grow beautiful plants without good roots, and from my perspective, this community and Mr. Mechchen, our city manager, he understands that too. He's been here his whole life. And a lot of you have been here many, for many years, and I hope your root systems are enhanced by being in the city of Farmington Hills. So we'll go to the next one. Obviously, you have to start out with welcome to the city of Farmington Hills. And I hope that every visitor, when they come here, the, they understand that this is a welcoming community. So, little slides as things change. Been here my whole life, I get to kind of reminisce a little bit and share some things that do change with you. So, the next slide, which has on the left side of this slide the black and white photo, mainly because it was old enough that we didn't have color. But what, you, what do you see on this photo? For those of you way in the back, That area right up there, nothing in it. Now, that aerial photograph was taken in 1958. I, you can do the math, no, not yet. You can do the math. Um, like I said, I've been here my whole life, so that it's could have been a baby photo. Um, the one on the right, we are 98% developed at this point in time. We've done a lot of development in this community. So things have changed. We went from a very rural type of area, and I can tell you that when I was learning how to drive, one of the really interesting things is that half of our roads were still gravel. Drake wasn't paved, 13 mile west of Farmington wasn't paved, or uh, west of Drake wasn't paved. You could drive about two miles to the north or to the west, and you were in the middle of the woods. When I was younger, I would be able to, in summertime, I wanted to camp. So, mom, dad, I'm gonna go camping for a week. All I would do is go to my next door neighbor's lot, and my buddies and I, we would set up tents and we would camp there. You could, we could have a little campfire. We weren't violating any fire department rules at the time, but you could have a campfire and you could not even see it from my folks' house. 
But when we got hungry, you know, it was an easy walk home to get stuff, and then you go back and you feel like you're really out there in the woods. But that's the way it was. Things change. Go ahead and go to the next one. So, roads change. All these gravel roads that we have, and now we're down to about 18 miles of unpaved or gravel roads in this community where we have 236 miles of city roads. The upper left corner there, you see a blob. That's 13 Mile and Farmington Road, and that blob is a tree that was in the middle of the intersection at 13 Mile and Farmington, and you had to drive around the tree to get to North Farmington High School and so forth. They've obviously we've removed that tree. And you go from this sort of rural picture to 14 Mile and Orchard Lake now and our beautiful roundabout, the largest one here in Oakland County. Things have changed. Some of the things that have not changed though, we respect our legacy. So this community, which was started as the township of Farmington, became a city in 1973. As a township of Farmington, we had a lot of history. We had a lot of historical buildings, and those have, a number of those have been preserved. This is just an example. On the right-hand side, these are all historical sites that have been designated in the city. One of your brother uh, or sister commissions, the Historic District Commission, oversees that we don't forget that. And the next couple of slides, I'm not going to talk to each one of them, just pictures of how we've retained some of that history. I, I just mentioned, the, uh, I'm going to point out the barn down here because when I was younger, you'd drive along, it was not uncommon to see farms with barns like that. Go ahead to the next one. Others we've repurposed into city assets. This is the Longacre House. And the Longacre House went through several iterations before it became a city asset. So we've, we've retained that. Uh, this happens to be a photo with the Historic District Commission standing by one of our historical markers. I just like the name of it. It's the William Gates House. So apparently Bill Gates lived in Farmington Hills for a period of time. <laughs> Might be his uncle, though, because I think it's, it says 1817 on it or something like that. So go ahead. What did we not become as we did all this growth? Okay, I'm picking on our sister city to the east. We didn't become Southfield. That's, we don't have any really tall buildings. We've retained, the previous city councils have maintained having a maximum height of our buildings. We don't want those. We didn't want those big, huge buildings. To the right, now I'm picking on the city to the, e to the west. That's 12 Oaks Mall. We don't have a regional mall. That original 12 Oaks Mall, it was proposed to be in Farmington Hills, but previous councils made the decision not to do that. So we haven't, be, we haven't outgrown ourselves. Go ahead. So these three logos from the city of Farmington Hills, we're in our current one is the one on, on the right, the one in, in the middle, but I also like the first one because it does. It is a city of tradition and progress. And I think that's a take home message from what I'm saying to you. What we have done back in the day, we didn't have a lot of parks, but we've added parks. We've got Heritage Park, we've added Memorial Park, we've got n nature centers, we've got a golf course. Actually, the next slide is the golf course. We have added assets. This community adds assets because we are an extremely diverse community. And we celebrate that because it makes us stronger. But part of that is not everybody wants to go to a passive park and walk around. Some people want to go to active parks. Some people have dogs. So we have tried, council and over the years city management has always tried to match up as many opportunities as we have people so that we can offer things that are including everybody's interest. So that's a big piece of something we wanted to do. Go ahead. But in doing that, we can, you know, change 
is uncomfortable. So human nature doesn't necessarily like change. But things do change. For 37 years, you, the Beautification Commission, and we've met the members that are here tonight, have performed it, this important role of making sure that we advise the city, city management, city councils, on what needs to be done about beautification and environmental concerns. Honestly, beautification, that's one of, we're what, one of 31 communities that has a beautification commission. We're one of two that has the fine arts group in the state of Michigan because these are quality of life things. They make, you can live in your house, but this makes your community a place you can set down those roots. And what is that community, what do you do in the beautification? You look at things. This is the Spicer house. Uh, next couple of slides are just pictures where there's, we look at plantings around common areas. Of, we look at, you guys make sure that our city assets are beautified. Buildings, commercial buildings, subdivision entrances, places of worship, even our city hall and our court system. We want to make sure that they stay beautiful. Like I said, the next couple of slides, um, this also represents businesses. And we want the businesses and the business communities to take, take care of your entrances, take care of your beautification. The curb appeal is important, not just for homes, but for businesses and, and our places of worship. We also need places where we can go and just contemplate our thoughts. And we have those in this community. Same type of thing, just retaining that. And how do you do it? The Beautification Commission, not only do you just give advice, but you have programs like, and it was mentioned, the cleanup days that are working. Go ahead. The annual awards program. This program challenges businesses, places of worship, and subdivision residents, apartment complexes, to have beautification as a part of their activities within the community because it, it does improve our community. You also advise on environmental concerns. <laughs> and if I would be remiss if I didn't say that there are some questions and I would guess a very diverse set of opinions in here about our um, nice little friends. <laughs> but one of the things I wanted to share with you, and I talk about change, when I was young, it was very rare you actually saw deer. The population went down in the state of Michigan. You wouldn't believe that today, but there were regional programs to increase the population of the state of Michigan. They worked. <laughs> Well, the city is concerned about this, and when I was in Vicki's seat, when I was in the mayor's seat, one of the things that became very evident as we looked around is that this is a, again, a regional problem. And now, we've finally gotten the attention and here in Oakland County, and the cities around us are looking at this. SEMCOG, the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, is coming together and you have the opportunity to take a survey on what to do with the deer, and we want your input. That's available on our Farmington Hills City website. So we also, from the Beautification Commission, we look forward to what you guys can suggest. Next slide. So as I'm closing this out, I want to say, start back with this simple question. What makes Farmington Hills great? My answer to you is it's you. It's the people in this community that makes this city a great place to live because we have people who are involved in their areas of interest, the Beautification Commission, the Emergency Preparedness Commission, and I can run down, we have 25 or six different commissions and we have citizens who are involved in all of those and honestly, it's that involvement because you get think what you get out of something is what you're willing to put into it. And we want to make sure that our citizens are engaged 
and participating, and that's why we've been able to sustain all of the changes that we have over the years and still be an excellent place to call home. So the answer to my question is it's our people. So with that, I, most of you, if you know me, I could actually stand up here and talk for the next three hours. <laughs> but you have some other things to do, and I want to thank you for the honor of coming and sharing a few thoughts with you today. Thank you, Ken. Give me a minute to pop this up. I had a printer issue today, so we're gonna, there we go. We're gonna go off the laptop. I'm Jennifer Chin, I'm chair of the Beautification Commission. It is so good to see you all here tonight for our annual Beautification Awards. Unlike, I think, everyone else who spoke before, I have two green thumbs. I love plants. I grow them everywhere. I try to sneak plants in places where plants don't even fit. So that is part of my desire to be involved in the Beautification Commission because um, I think that nature and plants are so important for all of us. So um, those of you with green thumbs, we're one. Let's take a moment also to acknowledge the gorgeous fall day today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clap for it. <laughs> I hope everyone got outside and enjoyed the sun. I was able to spend a little time at Heritage Park picking up a kiddo from their um, nature, their nature preschool program. And the trees there are amazing. If you get a chance, just stop out and you can either drive through the park or um, a little short drive, or you can go and walk on their trails. And it is just gorgeous and it does your soul good. This summer, of course, our Michigan weather was not also without challenges. And we were lacking in rain, which is especially hard in public landscaping for places like our entrances and along roads. It's hot and dry and it's not the best environment to make something lush and green. So as you look at the photos that we um, show of our winners, you'll see that they absolutely rose to this challenge and it did not stop them from making incredibly beautiful spaces. They know a thing or two about creating them and they really use that knowledge to beautify Farmington Hills. Every year our judges are more and more impressed by what they see how the designs continue to evolve as foundation plants mature, how new ideas are incorporated as trends and as our knowledge of plants affect these changes. One example, as you enjoy these photos and as you travel around the city, keep your eye out for a successful use of native plants like black-eyed Susan, coneflowers, asters, and even goldenrod incorporated into traditional landscapes. You'll see a lot in the photos here. They look good and they do good. Tonight we'll be presenting the awards in categories. Hold your applause until the end of each category. Award winners can feel free to come and pick up your certificate at the table here anytime after your name is called during the presentation. It'll save a lineup at the end. Look for a card inside and you trade your card at the table where you checked in on your way out after the presentation and you'll get your um, sign that you can put up. Also, back by popular demand, we have some Farmington Hills trivia sprinkled throughout the pr presentation. There's no prizes, but hopefully you'll enjoy learning a little bit about our city's symbols. So without further ado, we will kick off the awards in our first category of offices. What do you do when faced with large buildings, often several entrances to accommodate your visitors, employees, and parking for everyone too? Our winning office buildings have exterior spaces that are not only functional, but also pleasant, relaxing, and attractive. Our judges noted newly surfaced and painted parking areas, well manicured lawns, and the use of plantings to highlight the doorways and create employee break spaces. Those are some of the things that stood out. Awards go to Arboretum Building, the south side of 12 Mile between Farmington and Drake, Brookfield, Office Park One, Northwestern Highway east of Middle Belt, Brookfield Office Park Two, same location, and Brookfield Office Park 3, also northwest, east of Middle Belt, just down the road. Fabian, Sklar, King, and Liss Law Office, the northwest corner of 12 Mile and Farmington, Farmington Hills Corporate Center 1, 
and Farmington Hills Corporate Center 2, Haggerty, south of Nine Mile, Friedman Real Estate, 12 Mile, east of Drake Road, JRT Agency, Haggerty Road, south of 12 Mile, North Valley 1, Northwestern, south of 13 Mile, and down the road, North Valley 2, Pine Office Condo, Middle Belt, north of Northwestern Highway, Spectrum Office Center, Northwestern Highway between Middle Belt and 14 Mile, and Ward Eagle on the southwest corner of 14 Mile and Middle Belt. Please give these winners a round of applause. I'd be remiss in mentioning in your program, you'll notice an asterisk by some of the names of our winners. These winners are those who've won for 10 years or more. So if you know the sum, they have been beautifying for quite a while. Um, I'm gonna now invite Susan Arlen, the CEO of the Greater Farmington Area Chamber of Commerce, to present an award to the chamber member with an exceptionally lovely business property. Hi everybody, I've invited Reba D. Hood to join me too because Reba's also in the chamber office. So when you come to visit the chamber like I know you all will, you will probably see Reba there more than I am there. So Reba, if you would hold this for us, okay. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce Sellers Buick GMC as the winner of the Chamber Award this year for beautification. So please. <laughs> what makes this so impressive is that their, their motto is reputation is everything. And a lot of us, when we think about reputation, we're thinking about the fact that we've had some sort of dealing with a business and then we have a past memory of them and that's what creates the reputation. But I would challenge you to, to actually broaden that a little bit because reputation starts with the very first impression that you get of a business. And they have worked so hard to make an absolute amazing impression from the curbside. So Sellers Buick at GMC is at 10 Mile in Grand River. When you drive by, there are absolutely amazing floral arrangements and greenery everywhere. And trust me, I don't think it's that easy to make an entire lot full of vehicles look like it's a rainbow, okay? But I, I get excited when I get to drive in there because that's just the beginning of the experience that you get there. So what Ken Massey was talking about with curb appeal, sellers gets that and your, your beginning experience starts with your first impression of that business. So it's very exciting to us at the Chamber to be able to recognize our Chamber member, Sam Slaughter, and Sellers Buick GMC. So if you'd like to come up and get your award, I'd love that. And he's a repeat winner as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> so. You're really appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, Mayor Barnett, I join you in the black thumb, and if I shook anybody's hands, my house is the house where plants come to die. So you may have taken that home with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, and congratulations again to Sellers Buick GMC. Moving to the category of shopping centers, You'll want to make sure to pay attention to the plantings at Marketplace Specialty Center on Orchard Lake, south of 13 Mile. They really make the most of a challenging space right along a major road. And as you drive down Orchard Lake, you, you see their plantings right away. So congratulations to them. <laughs> Next up is businesses. We appreciate that these ward winners, on top of keeping things running day to day, also took the time to beautify our city. Each space is unique and all of them, as you'll see, are lovely. American House, Middle Belt, north of 10 Mile. Amer Amerisher Insurance on Halstead, between 11 and 12 Mile. Beaumont Commons at Tuck and Folsom. Cafe Cortina, the south side of 10 Mile, east of Orchard Lake. Doctors David M. Clark and Carolyn L. Romsick at 12 Mile, east of Middlebelt. 
Dr. Mark S. Camarada, Doctor of Dental Science at 12 Mile East of Farmington Road, Earhart BMW of Farmington Hills at Grand River and North Industrial, Gianna's Fine Art and Custom Picture Framing, 12 Mile between Orchard Lake and Middle Belt, Halstead Place, Halstead and 13 Mile, Illuminating Concepts, 10 Mile East of Orchard Lake, Land Rover and Jaguar of Farmington Hills at Grand River and Hathaway, McCabe Funeral Home, 12 Mile West of Orchard Lake, Sellers Buick GMC, Grand River and 10 Mile, and Suburban Imports of Farmington Hills at Grand River and 10 Mile. Please give them all your congratulations. And now for a little trivia break. I remember learning in school about national and state symbols. For example, the state fish of Michigan is the brook trout, and the state stone is the Petoskey stone. But did you know Farmington Hills also has symbols that represent our city? I did not, actually, until we researched this. So we're going to learn a little bit about the symbols today. First question, what is the Farmington Hills city bird? The robin, the wild turkey, the cardinal, or the blue jay? I will tell you that turkey up there, I took his picture while we were out doing some judging. He was strutting around in front of our office centers and he clearly thought that he was the right answer. <laughs> he's very elegant, but he's not. The answer is the cardinal. You're probably most familiar with the bright red males. Keep an eye out for the more subtly colored grayish tannish females too. They're both beautiful. They have black masks, large orange beaks, and little crests on their head. A fun fact about cardinals is that they do stay with us year round. In winter, they'll gather together in large flocks and you can see them making a stunning display against the snowy landscape or perched up in the evergreen trees. A flock of cardinals can be called a college, a conclave, a radiance, or a Vatican. <laughs> so, speaking of cardinals and Vaticans, we're moving on to places of worship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, enjoy the beautiful photos of the landscape grounds. The places of worship are often work of members and volunteers that make these spaces beautiful. We have Narden Park United Methodist Church, 11 mile between Orchard Lake and Middle Belt, Orchard United Methodist Church, Farmington, south of 14 mile, and St. Fabian's Catholic Church and School. 12 mile between Orchard Lake and Farmington. A letter of commendation also goes to ISCOM of Farmington Hills. Let's appreciate the efforts they make to create peaceful and inviting spaces in our city. In the category of organizations, we have one award winner, the Finlandia Gardens of the Finnish Center Association on eight mile west of Gill. They continue to create something special year after year, and they have been our award winner many times. Let's give them a hand. Now I'm going to turn it over to Catherine Massey to present the 2022 Beautification Commissioner's Award. Good evening. So every year, the members of our commission choose one organization and, and property in particular that we can all agree is outstanding and did an outstanding job. And in this year, that property is St. Fabian's Catholic Church. Now, I have been judging I have been judging places of worship for a few years now, and I have noticed that the obviously dedicated volunteers, very dedicated volunteers, do a really beautiful job of creating and maintaining the landscaping surrounding the three properties, the, the three buildings that are on the St. Fabian's property. So at, that, at this moment, I would like to invite members of the St. Fabian organization to come up and receive the commissioner's award.
You're the volunteers? We're all the volunteers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all volunteers. You, do, the table, it's different. you do a fabulous job. You really do. Thank you. So, who wants to? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Catherine, and congratulations to St. Fabian's Catholic Church and School. It is gorgeous. I live very nearby, and I pass by, and it's a beautiful property. We're going to continue our awards. We're going to move to focus on the places that people live. As you see the photos, you're going to check out the attractive signage, interesting rock and boulder formations, well-maintained trees and bushes, and fun pops of color, and you will see why our judges love these awardees. And the category of apartment entrances, our judges were very impressed with these welcoming spaces. Carrington Place, the northeast corner of Freedom and Drake, Kendallwood Apartments, 12 mile west of Orchard Lake, and Lakeview Apartments, Middle Belt, south of 10 Mile. Please share a round of applause. <laughs> now we have another trivia break. The Farmington Hills City Flower is the marigold, the daylily, the sunflower, or the rose? Well, you didn't even let me give the hint. <laughs> so I have a hint. Think about the Center Islands on Orchard Lake Road near the City Hall complex. Does it change your answer? No, everyone's right, it is the daylily. Daylilies make a wonderful landscaping plant, thriving in a wide variety of temperatures, climates, and soil conditions. They can be used for everything from preventing soil erosion to potted displays. There's more than 80,000 varieties of daylilies that are thought to exist, with more being developed every year by breeders. So adaptable, diverse, and gorgeous, I think it represents our city well. Our next category is subdivision entrances. The winners in this category all provide cheerful, a cheerful invitation to our guests and a warm welcome to those who live there. We have Applebrook on Halstead, north of 8 Mile. Barrington Green on 12 Mile west of Drake. Colony Park West 3. Drake Road, north of 12 Mile. Country Ridge, 14 Mile, between Halstead and Haggerty. Dunbar Oaks, Drake, south of 13 Mile. Farmington Brook on Haggerty, between 12 and 13 Mile. Farmington Ridge, Glens, and Groves, north of 13 Mile and west of Halstead. Farmington Square, 9 Mile and Halstead. The Forest at Hunter's Point, Drake, north of 13 Mile. Green Hill Woods on 9 Mile west of Drake Road. Halstead Hills on Halstead, north of 12 Mile. Holly Hill Farms, Middle Belt, north of 12 Mile. Hunt Club at 11 Mile, east of Halstead. Hunter's Point, 13 Mile west of Drake. Old Franklin Town, Middle Belt, south of 13 Mile. Three Oaks Homeowners Association, Farmington Road, north of 13 Mile. Timber Creek, Orchard Lake, south of 11 Mile. Whispering Woods Estates, Halstead, north of 12 Mile. And Woodland Trails, 13 Mile, between Drake and Halstead. A letter of commendation also goes to the Pines of Farmington Hills. Congratulations. Okay, that was a mouthful. <laughs> For our final trivia break, I have two questions. The Farmington Hills City tree is the maple, the cherry, the walnut, or the oak? Okay, we've, I hear some walnut and I hear some cherry. Here's a fun fact. The Beautification Commission actually picked the tree a while back before it was part of the group, but I heartily agree with their choice. It is the oak. Oaks are not only majestic, they support more than 2,300 species, or depending on which internet site you go with, 
4,000 species. It includes about 950 caterpillars. That's across all the types of oaks we have. So not only the caterpillars, the early state of the pollinators, but they're a really important food source. Caterpillars are important for birds and other small animals. So you've got a lot going on with our oak trees. Be aware that our oak trees are at risk right now. If you care for a property that has oaks, you'll really want to look into the oak wilt disease and how to protect your trees. It's a fast spreading fungal disease that in 2021 was the number one killer of oak trees in Michigan. There's a few things you can do like pruning at the correct time and I believe there's some treatments now to keep our um, city tree well protected. Okay, back to the caterpillars. Here's our final trivia question. The Farmington Hills city butterfly is the monarch, the giant swallowtail, the red admiral, or the question mark? Which is actually a butterfly, not me forgetting an answer. <laughs> okay, there are some, but here's some butterfly facts. The monarch is the state butterfly of Michigan. The red admiral is the most widespread butterfly in Michigan. And the question mark was named after a question mark looking marking on the underside of their hind wings. You can't see it, it's underneath there. There's also a comma butterfly that has a similar mark. But the most distinguished butterfly of all is the giant swallowtail because it is Farmington Hills butterfly. This butterfly is the largest in North America. It can have a wingspan up to six inches. It ranges from our area to as far south as Colombia and Venezuela. And I did learn that they can be a danger to orange trees. So fortunately, we can't really grow orange trees right here, so we can just enjoy our butterfly. <laughs> We've reached our final category, which is condominium entrances. A result of the combined efforts of condo associations, residents, and landscapers, you can see that they take pride in their appearance and do a great job of keeping Farmington beautiful. We have Chestnut Ridge, Halstead, north of 12 Mile, Copper Creek Community Association, 12 Mile, west of Halstead, Essex Club, Halstead, north of 12 Mile, Greenpoint at Copper Creek, 13 Mile, west of Halstead, Hampshire House, 14 mile west of Orchard Lake, Heatherwood Condominium Association on Middle Belt north of 12 mile, Meadow Ridge, Middle Belt north of 11 mile, Pine Knolls on Middle Belt between 12 and 13 mile, Ramblewood, 14 mile east of Halstead, Sierra Point, 13 mile in Halstead, and the Meadows, 13 mile and Farmington Road, a letter of commendation goes to Nantucket. Please put your hands together one more time and congratulate these winners. This concludes the presentation of the awards. I'm going to turn it over to Carol Kurth once more to close out the evening. Thank you. Oh, I'm not that tall. Oh, what? You got it. Yes. Thank you. I know. Um, did everybody get enough to nibble on or whatever? Well, thank you for all the beautiful entrances and area plant plantings around our city. In closing our program, I'd like to give special thanks to the planning and community development staff, um, especially our city liaison, Charmaine Kettler-Smith, Kettler who was doing all of this uh, photographic beauty here, and also the secretary of that department, Jerry LaBelle, I don't know if you know, but Charmaine was just appointed director of the um, planning and community department, even though she's our liaison. Thanks to the staff at Special Services and Video Division for its preparation now and hopefully presentation for our television show that'll appear probably in November or so, or December, November, I'm getting this. Um, we especially 
appreciate all the uh, help from the Caustic Center activity staff. So I'd like to give them, because of food, coffee, dessert, a little hand clap. Now each table has a pretty floral arrangement. We are noted for giving them away, so to speak, at the end of the program. Uh, these were designed and uh, presented to us by Michelle, or Mickey, at the Vines Flower Shop, uh, Flower and Garden Shop in downtown Farmington. Now, it will belong at each table to the guest whose birthday is closest to our 2023 Carol Posby Litter Walk, which is on April 29th. So, somebody just before or just after can take the flower. The city appreciates your great work. Have a safe trip home. And don't forget to pick up your award sign as you leave. Have a good evening. <laughs>